Bring one hand to your belly and one hand to your heart and continue to breathe your natural breath in and out through your nose. On your next exhale, gently take the hand that's on your belly and exhale all of the air, pressing it all out. And then through your nose, fill up your lungs, through your belly, through your chest, all the way up to the top. And then open your mouth and sigh it out like you're fogging up that mirror. Use your belly to help you get all of the air out. The exhale is very important. When you get to the bottom, inhale again. When you get to the top, exhale slowly. It's almost like the sound of the ocean. And when you get to the bottom, inhale again slowly. When you get to the top this time, see if you can take one more sip of air and even see if you experiment with holding your breath for a little bit. And when you're ready at your own pace, exhale it. You can experiment with holding your breath at the bottom of your breath before you inhale if you like. And then inhale slowly. Take a couple of, a few rounds of this breath on your own. Fogging up that mirror. <sighs> on your next round, when you get to the top of your breath, seal your lips and breathe out through your nose, keeping that same growling breath. Breathing helps to warm up our spine and calm down the central nervous system. You can take these kinds of breaths um, anytime that you need with large breaths and holding your breath and exhaling and holding your breath. Um, this is sometimes called breathing as well. Go ahead at this point and you can take your hands to your side again and start to wiggle your fingers and toes and take a nice good morning stretch over your head with your palms facing each other and pointing your toes. And then on the exhale, pull your knees into your chest and roll around giving your lower back a nice massage. And then let your left knee drop back to the mat and pull, clasp your um, hands over your right shy, shy shin and pull your knee into your chest and on the um, inhale, pull towards your armpit and on the exhale, let it go and drop your shoulders into the mat. So inhale, pull a little more and exhale and let it go. Send your right leg down to meet your left and bring your left leg in and cl clasp your hands over your left shin. And on the inhale, pull that knee towards your armpit and on your exhale, relax your shoulders more down into the mat. Inhale, pulling that knee in. Exhaling, letting it go. And send your left back down to your right. Bring your right knee back in and then take your right hand on your right knee and we're gonna draw those circles on the ceiling. So in a big, exaggerated, draw some nice big circles on the ceiling. You might feel some snap crackles and pops in your hip, that's okay. And now draw the circles in the opposite direction and keep breathing, don't forget to breathe and you should be breathing in and out through your nose. 
nice big in and out breathing in this warm up beginning part of class. And now you can send um, your right leg down to meet your left and bring your left knee in and take your left hand on top of your left knee and draw those big circles on the ceiling. And then go in the opposite direction. Always notice that opposite sides might feel really different in your body. And we will send the left leg down to meet the right. Go ahead and take a nice stretch again. And bring your knees up. And let's uh, um, send your feet back towards your, send your toes towards your face and then point your toes. So you can flex your toes and point your toes a few times in and out. And then let's circle our ankles in one direction, both ankles, circle them around and then circle them in the opposite direction. And you'll roll over to one side and then come up to standing. And let's take a nice stretch up and then tee your hands out and slowly arch forward and you can bend your knees. And remember, if you need to be near a wall or a sofa or a chair um, for your balance, that's absolutely fine. Your feet should be hips distance apart. A good way to measure that is two hips, but two fists between um, your feet and bend your knees as much as you can so that your belly rests. And then once you are hanging, let your head totally go. And if it works, grab for opposite elbows and just sway back and forth. Let your head totally and neck go totally like it's a coconut hanging from a tree. Let your head totally go. You can work on straightening your legs if you like. You can always keep a little bend, never lock your knees though. And keep breathing and just feel, this should feel really good. It's good to stretch in your lower back. It's good for your neck and your shoulders to let some of that tension go. Go ahead and let your hands dangle back towards the earth and slowly one vertebrae at a time, as slowly as you can with your head will be last, come up one vertebrae at a time to standing. And we will find ourselves in mountain pose. Let's do a little balance. And if you want to be near the wall or something, you can. Um, and we were just going to take all of your weight into uh, your right foot. You can lift your toes and put them back down and feel the four corners of your feet and simply put your leg, left leg knee out. And we will put our foot, you can kickstand it here. If you do practice tree and you want it further up your shin, you can. If you want to bring it up to your thigh, you can as well. It's fine if you just want to kick stand and you can grow your leaves, your branches if you want and give a good morning stretch. And you can go ahead and bring your knee to the front and put it back down to meet the other foot. And now get grounded in your left foot and you can just kick stand your toe to the side or bring it up to your shin, or if you wanna bring it all the way up to your thigh, uh, you can, but it's fine to leave your toes on the ground. Look at something that is not moving, which would not be me. <laughs> and um, that would be called your drishti, that point that you can look at. And we will just stretch up. And go ahead and bring your right foot down to meet your left and take that nice stretch. You can even take an arch in your back and slowly take that dive back down to a forward fold. 
and bringing your hands to your shins. Let's do a half lift here to stretch that back out. All right, coming down um, to the mat, coming down to your knees, uh, we'll meet in tabletop. But instead of doing tabletop yet um, and cats and cows, we're gonna arch, we're gonna put our, tuck your toes and come back towards your heels. You might wanna put a pillow here um, if you don't reach or just come towards your heels. If you can sit on your heels, that's fine. If you can't, it's not necessary. And we're gonna do a little stretch um, and let me go ahead and give the alternative. If you have shoulders or neck issues and you can't quite do the eagle arms, you can just grab for opposite shoulders. Or if you wanna do eagle arms, your left arm is gonna reach under your right and you can clasp your hands in front of you um, like so. So it's a scissoring around. And see if you can get the tops of your feet that stretch. If it's too much for you, you can sit on the tops of your feet. Um, but this should feel, this is really a good stretch for your feet. You should never feel any shooting pain in yoga. If you do back out and do something different, again, you might just be grabbing your shoulders here. And now gently unwind and come to the tops of your feet. And if you need a pillow, you can, you can sit on the tops of your feet. And if it works in your body, you can reach your hands behind you and pivot and rip your knees up. And this is a good stretch for the top of your feet. And then come back up. And we are going to tuck our toes one more time. And whatever arm was on top, so if you had this one, um, you'll have your other arm on top. And we will again, um, last time I had my left under, this time I'm gonna have my right under. I'm going to rub my right under and I'm going to stretch those shoulders with these eagle arms. So I'm getting a nice stretch in my shoulders and a nice stretch in the tops of my feet. Gently unwind and come back to your tops of your feet. And you can take that stretch again. Come back up into tabletop. And with your knees under your hips and your hands underneath. Um, and for this, make sure you're not putting all of your weight on your, um, on your palms. And what I'd like for us to do um, at this point uh, with your palms, is let's, while we're here, take one of your hands opposite and put, and put it wrist down and just put a little bit of weight on your right wrist here. Just feel a little bit of weight. That's a good counter stretch for your wrists um, in yoga. Just a little bit of weight. You don't wanna hurt yourself. And then do that with the other hand as well. This is always a good, um, if you're finding yourself at the computer a lot, this is a good, uh, way to give yourself a little bit of a stretch that will feel good. And come back to our hands. Back in tabletop now, make sure you're clawing your finger pads so that all of your weight is not on uh, your wrists and drop your belly and lift your gaze on the inhale. And on the exhale, arch your belly and come up into that scared cat. You can actually come up on your fingertips here as well. So on the inhale, lift your head and your tail. And on the exhale, arch. Inhale. And exhale. And we will meet in seated position. Any comfortable position, cross, simple cross-legged is fine. Put your hands on your knees. And now also for your lower back, if you would go over to your left side and we're just going to take some circles this morning around. It should feel really good on your spine. Again, anything that doesn't work for you, just skip it and don't do it.
and then go the other way. And meet back in the middle. And then let's do the same thing with our neck. Um, go ahead and look down and then to the left and up and all the way around, taking some nice, slow, intentional neck circles this morning. And then go the other way. Keep breathing. All right, for our first uh, yin pose, just bring your feet out in front of you and flex your toes back. And remember, these are those positions that we're taking to keep in our body's fascia to really um, get into that connective tissue. And so finding that sense of stillness can be really important. So it doesn't matter how much you fold, but that you're just getting that stretch in your body. So let's stretch up and then just hinge forward with a flat back. And then you're just going to come forward. You're welcome to take a pillow here to lean into. You can put your hands on the floor or on your shins. You might just be bending a little bit. You might bend more. Everyone's body is different. And we're just going to breathe here. Make sure you're letting your head go. The tongue should be off the roof of your mouth. Relax your jaw, relax your eyebrows, relax your shoulders. Just let everything melt into the ground. might find yourself sinking a little bit closer to the ground, a little bit further into the pose. And don't forget to keep breathing. Thank you. 
Slowly come up one vertebrae at a time. Your head will be last to come up. And then make your way to your belly on the mat. And you can just rest here for a moment on your favorite ear. And then for a counter stretch to that forward fold, we're gonna come up into Sphinx. Your elbows should be underneath uh, your shoulders and feel a nice stretch in your lower back. Again, if any of this does not work in your back, you're always welcome to take a child's pose, uh, which we'll be getting to next. Um, if this is too much in your back, you can always come out and just rest at any point. We'll hold the Sphinx pose for a little bit. You feel a good stretch in your lower back. Just relax your legs. Go ahead and come back down to the mat. And we will come up to our knees and our next pose will be child's pose. And you have two choices. If you need more of a stretch in the top of your body, like your shoulders, the traditional child's pose, you'll keep your knees together and move back like this. If you need more of a stretch in your lower back and in your hips, put your toes together and your knees to the edges of the mat and sit back and then move forward. You can always put a pillow here uh, on the ground or a stack of pillows to lean forward um, to get the amount of stretch that you need in your back. Or you can come to the ground, but a pillow is never a bad idea for this pose if you need it. So experiment in your body, take a moment and figure out which kind of stretch you would like to have. Stretching out the top of your spine for this one, or stretching out your lower back to have your knees together. And we will hold child. And this is also a great pose. Either one of these versions of child is always something that you can come to in any yoga practice uh, when you just need, your body just needs to rest or take a small break and catch your breath. And we will hold this child's pose then.
make sure that you're letting everything go, relaxing into the mat, relaxing your shoulders. See if you can sink a little more deeply toward the earth and breathe. Come up slowly and make your way to your back on the mat. And it might feel good to stretch right now. Give yourself a slow stretch. No quick movements here. And then bend your knees and lift your rear end up and put it put your hips to the left of the mat and move your feet to the bottom right of your mat. 
and then move your hands. And if you want to go ahead and grab for opposite elbows, if that works in your body, if not, you can keep your hands straight. Um, if you have the opposite elbows, squeeze that uh, left bicep to your left ear and move your head towards the top uh, right of your mat. So your feet are going to the right, keep your hips on the ground. So if you're only curving a little bit, that's okay. Um, this is affectionately known as banana asana. So keep your shoulders and your hips flat to the floor. And so you're going to be doing that curve. If you need a little extra stretch, you can take that left leg and wrap it up over your right. If not, just keep your feet uh, together and we will breathe together here, sinking into the ground. Breathe. Make sure you're not clenching your shoulders, relax them into the earth, relax your hips, relax your toes, just breathe.
come back to center, maybe your hips to the center of your mat. Um, you can take a stretch here. Go ahead and bring your knees into your chest and can gently rock your lower back a little bit, giving it a little bit of a massage. Put your feet back to the mat with your knees bent and lift your hips to the right side of your mat. We're gonna repeat this on the other side. So take your feet towards the bottom left corner of your mat, keeping your hips on the ground, square on the ground. And then you can make that box of your ears, um, grabbing for your elbows, or you can have your hands long. The elbows don't work for you. And bring your head to the top left of your mat. You should feel a good stretch in your right side here. And relax back down into the mat. Closing your eyes, of course, if you need to. And just breathe. If you need that extra stretch, you can um, take your right leg and put it, wrap it up and over um, your left angle, your right leg over your left ankle. If not, just keep your feet together. This side might feel totally different. Just relax into the mat and breathe. Go ahead and come back to center. And if you take traditional pigeon, um, this is the time that you can do that if you know what you're doing. Um, I'm gonna give you two other options though. Um, so if you know what pigeon is, you can go ahead and do that on your right side. Um, if you want, if you are near a wall, I'm gonna give you um, a really fun thing to do with the wall. If you're not near a wall, uh, what we're gonna do is bring our left knee up and cross our right ankle over our left knee. And then we will grab, um, put our right hand through that hole that we've, um, uh, the pigeonhole that we have uh, created and grab for our left shin. And our right um, elbow is in that knee and just gently pulling um, forward and to the mat. If you have a wall handy, you can come up to the wall 
And we'll do the same thing. You get your hips as close to the wall as you can, and you'll have your legs up the wall. And you will bring your left leg down. You'll put your right, um, sorry, cross your right um, ankle over your left knee, and then gently walk your leg down the wall with your hips close to the bottom of the wall. And then your arms are free and can just relax at your side. If you're taking the other one, of course, you have your hands through like so. And if you're on the wall, this is a modified pigeon where you get that stretch in your right hip. It also should feel good in your lower back. And just breathe into the ground, whichever variation of pigeon you have today. If you're at the wall, you might find that your foot can gently come down a little bit more as you relax more into the ground. If you have uh, the other position, you might feel that you're relaxing more into the ground and making sure that you breathe. Remember, you should never feel any pain. If you feel ever feel any sharp um, shooting pain, back out of what you were doing. Gently unwind, and if you're at the wall, you can just put your legs up the wall and stretch. Um, if you are on your back, uh, we're going to be moving to the other side. So you're going to take your left ankle over your right. Your left hand will go through and you'll clasp uh, your right shin. If you are at the wall, you're going to cross, do the same action, except your foot is up the wall. You're going to cross your left ankle over your right knee and then gently begin to walk your right foot down the wall and you'll get a nice stretch in your left hip this time. And if it gets to a sharp pain, just back out some, or if you have to, you know, come out of the position. Just relax and breathe.
gently unwind and we will come back um, to the mat, still on our backs. And take your feet as wide as your mat and just gently aim your right knee for your the bottom of your left foot, just your knees toward the ground. This is called deer leg pose. And, we're, and then go in the opposite direction very slowly. This will give you a good internal rotation for your hip after stretching the outside of your hip. And you can take it in both directions slowly a couple of times here. Okay, now coming to the middle of your mat with your arms out in a T and bring your knees up. And we're gently going to stretch to um, drop our knees to the right. And if you need a little bit more of a stretch, you can take that right leg and cross it up over your right and bring it to the floor. If not, just keep your knees together. And if your knees don't comfortably come to the floor, prop it up with a pillow or two and have your legs on that, keeping your shoulders on the ground. So um, if your sh left shoulder's popping up, go ahead and put some more pillows underneath your right side. If it works in your shoulder, back and neck, take your um, gaze towards your left hand for this twist. This is great uh, for digestion. You get a nice twist for massaging those internal organs. I'll take a few breaths here and just relax. Go ahead and come up through center and we will take our knees uh, in the other direction. So dropping your knees to the left and take your gaze to the right and just relax into the mat. back through center. Take any stretches that your body craves at this point. Um, 
You can stretch out. You might want to come up and roll around on your back. Uh, you can pitch your feet toward the ceiling and grab for your sh um, shins or for your feet. This is happy baby. You can reach your feet and just roll gently on that lower back for a massage. And when you're ready, we'll meet in Shavasana. You could even, if you like the way it felt when you were up against the wall and had your legs up the wall, you could even do legs up the wall. Um, if not, just meet us in regular Shavasana with your feet at the bottom, flopping, toes flopping towards the mat shoulders underneath you and just check out how your body's feeling as you close your eyes and breathe. If you need to feel more grounded, you can put your hands down. If you want to have your hands up, just opening this as well. And just relax and breathe. When you are ready, gently move to your right side using your arm, lower arm as your pillow, and you're sort of in a yogi fetal position. This also gives your lower back a little bit of a stretch here. When you're ready, gently press yourself up to a seated position, whatever is comfortable for you. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. I'm glad. Uh, that you could uh, be here and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and the light in me shines to the light in all of you and again I bow to you thank you